I'm at the Military Women's Memorial, located at the ceremonial gateway to Arlington National Cemetery. We are the only national memorial dedicated to telling the stories of America's service women from all eras and all military services. Today, we're taking a closer look at one of those stories. Dr. Mary Edwards Walker was a surgeon, abolitionist, suffragist, and feminist reformer. Born in 1832, she was raised in a progressive household in Oswego, New York. Her father believed that women should be educated and encouraged to pursue professional careers. Walker earned a medical degree from Syracuse Medical College in 1855. She was the only woman in her class and became one of the nation's first woman physicians. She married fellow classmate Arthur Miller and they established a joint practice in Rome, New York. Walker later divorced her husband, which was very unusual for the time. Walker was a controversial figure throughout her life. From an early age, she wore bloomers, which she felt were a healthful, comfortable, and practical alternative to the heavy and restrictive dresses women wore at the time. By 1857, she launched a lecturing career speaking on dress reform and chose to wear trousers in later years. Shortly after the Civil War began in 1861, Walker traveled to Washington, D.C. to join the Union Army, but she was denied a commission as a medical officer because she was a woman. So she volunteered at the U.S. Patent Office Hospital, working without pay. Later, she served at the headquarters of General Ambrose E. Burnside near Warrington, Virginia. She worked as an unpaid field surgeon near battlefields, including tending wounded from the Battle of Fredericksburg in 1862. Walker was finally offered an unofficial contract position in early 1864 as an acting assistant surgeon with the 52nd Ohio Volunteers, which made her the first woman physician employed by the U.S. military. She routinely traveled where she was needed, often crossing between Union and Confederate lines. In April 1864, Walker was captured, arrested as a spy, and held as a prisoner of war at Castle Thunder, a notorious prison in Richmond, Virginia, until she was freed in a prisoner exchange. For the remainder of the war, she worked at a women's prison in Louisville, Tennessee, and the refugee home in Clarksville, Tennessee. In June 1865, her army contract ended. On November 11, 1865, President Andrew Johnson awarded Walker the Medal of Honor. The citation for her medal stated that she faithfully served as contract surgeon in the service of the United States and has devoted herself with much patriotic zeal to the sick and wounded soldiers, both in the field and hospitals, to the detriment of her own health, and has endured hardships as a prisoner of war four months in a Southern prison while acting as contract surgeon. After the war, Walker spent the rest of her life advancing the cause of women's rights. She was an active participant in the National Woman's Suffrage Association with suffrage leaders Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Always a nonconformist, Walker argued that there was no need for a constitutional amendment for women's suffrage believing that the U.S. Constitution already gave women the right to vote as citizens, a belief that, along with other radical views, led many suffrage leaders to distance themselves from her. Dr. Mary Edwards Walker was a lifelong agent of change. A provocateur who lived at a time when women's roles were limited, she defied social expectations and forged her own path. We remember her lasting impact, including the fact that she remains to this day, the only woman ever to receive the Medal of Honor. Walker was delighted to receive her medal and wore it for the rest of her life. In 1917, the Medal of Honor Board removed her name and 910 others from its list of recipients after rewriting the qualifications to require engagement in actual combat. Although this made her ineligible, Walker refused to return her medal and over the next two years tried without success to appeal the withdrawal until her death in 1919. In 1977, the Army Board of Corrections posthumously restored Walker's Medal of Honor, recognizing her acts of distinguishing gallantry, self-sacrifice, patriotism, dedication, and unflinching loyalty to her country. 
To learn more stories of women past and present who serve our nation, visit www.womensmemorial.org. Tune in for our next Her Story Spotlight.